Hello and welcome back to First Impressions Fridays. This is a series where I try out a new productivity app for just one day and share my initial thoughts and reactions. And in today's video, I want to try out an app called Walling, which as the name suggests, I think is supposed to mimic having note cards on a physical wall, which you can move around and rearrange as you'd wish. But I don't know that much more about the app, but I'm curious to find out. So let's head on over to the website and find out together. All right, there is a quick intro video, so let's watch this. Hi. I'm Noah. So that was really cool. I just watched a quick intro video on the app that just explains more of the philosophy of how walling works and how it solves the problems that we have with apps like Notion. And I did resonate with the idea that when you just want to jot something down quickly and don't want to think about where it belongs, Notion makes that really difficult. But because this is such a visual representation of your notes, you don't have that friction as this guy was saying. So here is a sample page. This is pretty clean looking. It kind of reminds me of Super Notes in this card design. I like this little bear, it's so cute. Let's sign up and see what we can do. All right, and we are into the app. I see there's like a little help guide. So don't create a new wall to collect random ideas in one page. So I actually have a board on Notion called Scratchpad where I do just what Walling is saying not to do, of creating a new page just to store weird random ideas. The problem here is I never get back to them. So this is kind of like the Zettelkasten approach, I believe, of storing disparate ideas in different places and then using different pairing or filtering tools to see how different ideas connect. Ooh, a discount code. Oh no. Interesting videos from Paste That. Okay. Here is the node, which is like the filter. I do like this idea of having nodes on both the brick level and on the line by line level so you can fully take advantage of this connecting structure thing that we're gonna see. Oh, okay, so I guess by default they just go vertically, but you can drag and drop them like this. Let's also see this graph thing. Ooh. What the heck? Pretty good. Let's see the time. All right, so it is 8 p.m. and the sun has started to set. So I think I'm gonna call it wraps for now. I'm gonna go do some workout. So yeah, I will check back with you tomorrow. All right, I am back and it actually is already dark outside. So I did spend a good chunk of yesterday testing out this app and making a couple of different pages or wait, walls that would work for me. So as I mentioned last time, we got this daily desk thing in Walling, which is pretty similar to what they have in Rome and probably also Obsidian. And this is actually something that I was looking for myself right before I found Walling and made this video. Within an actual card though, the amount of editing you can do is actually quite limited. You can add a text blurb, you can add a heading, some checkboxes, a link, and then the only other options are images and files and these things right here. So here on this wizard page, you can basically see all of the different cards that you have that match a certain filter criteria. So I didn't use this that much, but if you're really good about adding tags to all of your cards, this could actually be pretty useful. The other more interesting feature is this graph view. So this is something increasingly common. We've seen it with Rome. So I'm glad this is something that's becoming more and more popular because first it's fun to play with and also it really serves to fulfill that idea of having bottom up organization of your notes. There's also this folders feature, which honestly, I still don't understand how this is useful. We have this section down here, which is more a traditional top-down hierarchy that we have in something like Notion. So I made three different setups here that is 
quite interesting. The first is my recipe box. You can have sections like this that are toggles. So this is perfect when you have a bunch of different categories that you want to separate your notes by. The second thing that is nice is that you can paste images and also links and they show up individually like this. And it really helps this serve as more of an inspiration board. So one really annoying thing is that this doesn't retain new line formatting or bullet points, which I know that Supernotes was able to do. So this makes it quite frustrating to be honest when you're copying and pasting from other sources. The other setup I made is this apartment hunting board. So this really seemed useful for collaboration. Suppose we were not living in a pandemic and we're moving in with our friends to go live in New York City. Apartment hunting is pretty hard and a lot of the reason why is it's hard to send links back and forth to each other and figure out what everyone likes. This seems nice because here I can actually press this plus sign and add my friends to this board and then once we're all on this wall, we can also have this discussion here. You can also add comments, not just on the card level, but also on every line. So this one, for example, is cute. This one is not so cute. And the last thing that I made here is actually a collection. So I pressed new collection here to make a group of walls. So some parts of setting this up for you two were quite nice. For example, this metadata section was quite easy to set up. But when it came to actually planning out and scripting the video, it was pretty tedious because as you can see here, when you edit a card, there's not really that much in terms of formatting options and this is not as fast to edit as something like Notion. And one last thing I wanted to mention is that this app was actually built by a solo founder. And again, his story is really inspiring because he worked on walling by himself for most of his lifetime. I saw that he is very active on things like Product Hunt and on the Facebook community page for this app. So seeing someone who cares about actually helping his users make the most of his app is, is quite nice. All right, so the first category we've got here is ease of use. And I would give this an easy two out of two. I don't really remember having any struggles with signing up for an account. I also really like the fact that there was a video tutorial on the homepage that talked through the mission of walling. Oh, and there were also a couple of templates and demo pages set up even when you open the app that show how this app is meant to be used. And the next category is flexibility. And here I would give it a, a one. So one thing that I liked is that there are a lot of collaboration features that are available with this app, but they're not that intrusive and in your face like I felt with Taskade. If the user, regardless of who they are or what they're doing, wants to use this app for mostly brainstorming and getting inspiration or jotting down quick ideas, I think it's pretty universally flexible for anybody. But that being said, it's not that flexible because if you are someone like an academic or maybe you are a YouTuber who writes a lot of scripts or just generally do a lot of writing, this app will not be the best all-in-one solution because honestly, it's really hard to write a lot of stuff in this app, at least as of now. So the next category is feature set. Here, I can't decide. I would probably give it a one and a half. There are quite a few unique features for this type of app that I haven't seen before. This graph view is something that's becoming a lot more common, especially since the rise of Rome. But it's nice to see it applied in a bit of a different app that's more, I guess, card based. Also, the way that every wall is structured with multiple subsections is quite nice because it still enforces the idea of separating out your ideas into different chunks. And it's also nice to see more apps do something like this daily desk feature. As I said before, it kind of feels like this app is split in half. One half of it is the daily desk and the connect feature, which is all about jotting down small ideas and seeing them pieced together. The other half is our traditional top-down view of having different walls and collections and subsections and storing your information that way. 
but I don't see myself going back and forth that much between both. So I kind of wish that they decided on going one direction or another. The next category is productivity boost. If you're using this app for anything more than brainstorming or for an inspiration board, this is probably going to slow you down. I was a little bit frustrated by the fact that there weren't many shortcuts. The writing experience here is not the most ideal. I think mostly because it's not meant to be a full fledged text editor. And the last category is feel. Here, I would give it a, a one. I really like the design of it. It's quite clean, it's nice and minimalist. The nice thing is that if you are a student or a teacher or you just um, need financial support, the founder is so understanding of people's financial woes. And if you really want to use this app but can't afford it, he's there to help you out. And I think the visual nature of this app is something that is really unique and pretty underrated actually, because if you think about it, you can use that for so many things. Like you can use it for design inspiration for your personal website or to make a travel itinerary. You can use it to store uh, bookmarks or interesting links and websites like a resonance calendar. The main reason why I'm not giving it a two for the feel is that even though this is so great for brainstorming, it doesn't work for my entire workflow. And I personally, would rather try to find a system where I can do as much as I can in one app instead of jumping between two, unless I see a huge value add of each app individually. So our total is a 6.5 out of 10. And yeah, that's it for today's video. If you're enjoying this video and this series, please give this video a big like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on social media and I'll see you in the next one. Ooh. Oh, when you want to pout, pout, point five. Whoa.